All right, we're going to explain what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, explain it. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to try and keep this within 20 minutes. Uh, so we got a ring timer, and each person is going to get two minutes to speak, and then it's going to be 10 seconds to decide who the next person is going to go. And I guess they can either stay on the topic. and Or they can have a whole new topic. Or they can right? go on a new topic. Do you want to Bluetooth the ring timer into the board? <clears throat> no. Okay. <laughs> uh, so topic. Shane's going to go first, right? Yep. All right, so we're going to do nine rounds. It may be a flop, but I'm going to do it. It'll be nine rounds. So you got two minutes. Ready? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, my God. There we go. I'm, I'm, I missed the rule. Does it, is, is his. I'm going to talk for two minutes. Yeah. And then, and then I have to follow up on what he was talking about or well, I'm, we have 10 seconds to see who goes next and they can either follow up on his topic or, or start can, a new topic. Or just start, start something. Totally. Okay. Don't even have to address what I said. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be a shit show. It'll be fun. <laughs> Mine might not be as good as I think. <laughs> Here we go. Does that mean go? That means go. And I have two, two minutes. minutes. Perfect. Um, I want to talk about how to manage your happiness at work. And it is something we talked about earlier about, uh, it's, uh, you have to talk about managing your expectations. And if your expectations are entirely realistic, you create an environment where you basically live in turmoil all the time because your expectations can never, ever be met. So you constantly sit in this state of frustration because they're not, you're not where I think you should be. I, no one's meeting, no one's meeting my expectation. No one's, you're not doing this well enough. You're not doing that well enough. You're just, you have created an environment where you cannot be happy because you have failed to maintain realistic expectations. I'm not saying lower your expectations. I'm saying to think about and maintain realistic expectations. Do I have to go for the whole thing? Yeah, you need to keep going. So managing expectations. This is two minutes a lot longer than you think it is when you get started like that. Um, So managing expectations. Man, I'm struggling on that. It's really a one-minute statement. (laughs) Somebody can can tag in on that. Can I fluff for 30 seconds? Oh, my God. (laughs) Fun. Tag in. We could do the wrestling thing, and you could just. I'm just going to. Managing expectations, keeping your happiness. Yeah, I think that I think part of your your happiness has to come from managing expectations. If you constantly have unrealistic <laughs> expectations, you may find yourself in a very unhappy state all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ten seconds. Who's, who's going to go next? You don't even have to talk about it, though, right? It could be a yeah, whole other subject. It could be another subject. All right, I got him. All right, go. Time? Go. All right, so on what you're saying, I would probably challenge a little bit that you may be suppressing <laughs> some uh, expectations because I think expectations and standards can go side by side. So I get it, managing realistic versus unrealistic uh, expectations. What I would say is, I'm going to switch it to standards and go, don't ever lower your standards. How you deal with the uh, people around you, I would agree with manage your expectations. You know, what do you expect from these people so you don't get yourself too worked up? But I'd be very cautious to, and I I don't think this is what you're saying, so it's great that you don't get to rebuttal on it, Uh, (laughs) (laughs) that I would not lower my standards and I would also be extremely cautious that my intensity and who I am is not lost or pacified by trying to manage that expectation from other people. I think it's fair. Not everybody's going to work to your capacity above or below and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I've kind of struggled with this. And Nicole will always tell me, don't change who you are. That's just in your fiber. So don't lose your intensity. Uh, and definitely don't lower your standards. And I don't think you meant that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, as far as happiness, I'm with you 100%. Whatever you can do to manage uh, what you do to stay as content and happy as possible is important. I'm just killing time right now, too. I can't believe you guys can't go for two minutes. Yeah, I'm going for two minutes. I'm just saying I'm killing a little bit of time. I only got 15 seconds left. So 
I, I'm not in total disagreement. I, I know you don't mean lower standards, but I definitely would be cautious of that. And I can hear the ticker going by. Yeah. And I'm done. Right on time. All right, I'll go next. Holy crap, man. You guys, this is like a shit We show. suck. We thought it was going to be. Yeah. That's managing expectations. Right, so managing expectations kind of goes back to an earlier podcast that we had about the uh, Connor is a peach. You know, there's only so much change that you can you can put in there. Or you have to you have to be able to understand. You know, if you plant a peach, you can't expect to get an apple or get something else. So, uh, you know, I, I, I would, when I first became a battalion chief, you know, that was one of the things I thought about. Was like, all right, you know, my job is to develop all these officers into outstanding officers. Some of them are never going to be outstanding officers. I, I watched another guy, another battalion chief, much more senior than I was. And he had three guys, you know, six six captains all together, but he had three guys. And three of them were buffoons. And they were always going to be buffoons. And this guy I thought was, you know, very accomplished. You know, he's known as a great leader and stuff, and he had buffoon captains. And so you, when you start talking about managing your expectations, as soon as you get to that point, and I, I agree with you about the happiness, as soon as you get to that point, you realize, oh, I can't fix everything. Sometimes I just have to manage that situation with those individuals you become a lot happier about what's going on and it's not necessarily uh that you're failing you just being realistic about what their limitations are and what your limitations are you know you can't i can't make killers as, as right. the way bill put it right. you know and sometimes I, I had a crew that was giving me a hard time about one of my crews that did really poorly uh, on a fire scene and said are you taking them to the drill yard and running them into the ground I said, no. I said, I, you know, I don't really have time for that. And I said, if I did, see, look at that. I'm going to go the whole 22 minutes. is awesome. I said, I don't really have time for that. But if I did, you know, it probably wouldn't make the community better. But I can make them 50% better today. You want me to do it? And they're like, yeah. I said, all right, I'm going to take half of you guys and put them over there and half of them over here. I said, you're 50% worse and they're 50% better. Do you good with that? And I said, no, then shut up and stop telling me how to do my job. Just do your own damn job. So that's that's what working for me is like. Look at that, man. I'm going to go all the way. This is awesome. Yeah, First of all, you had. You can't say shit. On, you wait, wait. It. You got to wait to your time. It's going to have to be Bill's time. I'm going to be all the way through. He's got his hand up. This is what's going to go. I'm out. There's 10 seconds right now. Damn it. We didn't tell a story, and that's how he ate yeah. up a minute Plus of his time. Plus, he had my two minutes to think, your two minutes to think. Yeah. You said you wanted to start. Good right. job, though, buddy. All right. So I'm going to take the expectations thing in just a little bit different of a thing, but it's still expectations where uh, people that tend to work around me think that I'm not ever. Uh, happy with their output because I always believe that you can Do uh, make something better, you know? And what I think some people interpret that as is that it's a finish line that you're never going to get to. Um, you know, we can do this. And when you turn it in, I go, that's great, but it could be better the next time. And I think the, the, the way that you have to see that, or at least the way I see it um, and the way that, leads into that happiness because if somebody's always moving the finish line on you, you're going to get frustrated really, really quick because people want to accomplish stuff. If the way to see that instead is, is that you are breaking it down incrementally. You're setting uh, individual goals. So like if you were training for a marathon, you're, you're not, you know, you're not training to get to the lowest time that you could ever run a marathon. You're going to set goals this week, I want to knock this much time off of my training, you know, off of my time that I'm running in. And you, you, over time, you, you get better. You start working down to where that, that is. So the same thing with these, you know, if, if it's some project and you, you're doing something for me and you bring it to me and I say, that's great. And then the next week I'm saying, hey, here's how we can make this better. It's the same thing. If you set these individual goals up as this week we're going to make it this good and next week we'll make it that much better and then that you know and you, you see it as these bites uh it can be accomplishments and it's stuff that can be celebrated and you feel good about it instead of feeling like that it's it's this constant beat down that's probably my fault for how i'm communicating with these people you know that they don't see it as a, a progression they don't see it as uh that they have gotten better but that's really what it is it's an incremental better outstanding very good what about right, a 30 second rebuttal <laughs> well, your rebuttal is about to happen right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so shane's yeah, gonna so, go yeah i'm gonna right. go okay um so i i want to make sure that uh well, as everybody was talking i made myself start to think not to confuse managing expectations with settling so it's easy to get into the comfort of 
eh, you know what, that's probably as good as they're going to get. That's as good as I'm going to get. That's as good as anybody's going to get. And I'm just going to settle in that little spot right there. So I do like the thought and the concept of these little incremental changes. You know, that we did, we hit this, and I think next week or the next time we can do just a little bit better. I think that's, that's perfect. And it supports exactly my original statement on that, to me, is managing expectations. Because to think they're going to be the best of the best of the best – Mm -hmm. in one day is an unrealistic standpoint. And, and if you fight that all the time, you will end up in a state of you, nobody meets your stand. Nobody mm -hmm. can meet where you're at. Nobody can meet, nobody can get happy with where I'm at. And, and I think it does create an opportunity for a tremendous amount of frustration, self frustration, and you can easily turn it onto the job. This job, you know, you can mm -hmm. be mad at the job because nobody's meeting these expectations that you have purposely set the bar so high that no one can ever get to that bar. It, it can't be obtained. And again, the move in the finish line, that is the same thing. That bar set it a little higher, a little higher. You can't get that bar to the point where you break an individual. And that's the, that's the tough balance right there. Cause you don't want to use and just use them up. You know what I mean? Um, that, that's not the goal. The goal is to see how far we can get you to be the best you can without breaking the spirit of the individual. That's what I got. Am I allowed to well, add a harumph for anything? Harumph, harumph. Harumph. I did hear harumph for that guy. Who's next? I'll take it. Okay. I got, ten, I got, I got five Change seconds subject. left in this thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> not. We'll just see and go. So – because there's a pause in this and there's always a great prob probability that we can stop it and not move forward, I'd like to discuss hazard pay in the fire service and when it's applicable <laughs> and when it's not applicable. You know, I kind of took up issue with hazard pay. I think we all deserve more. I'm, I'm all for pushing for more for the uh, troops on the ground that are having to come up against everything that we have and will continue to have in the fire service. But when you say hazard, our job by nature is hazardous. And I just could not get behind, you know, hey, we're going to give you hazard pay for a specific situation that is, we are in a profession that is hazardous. I'm all about saying, hey, we're going to supplement your income, we're going to give you more income, we're going to give you time off. We know the stressful times, whatever it is, but, uh, and because I don't want it misconstrued to saying that I'm not in support of us getting more, uh, but just a hazard pay terminology. I know it was happening within the medical field too with nurses and stuff like that. So I just had a very difficult time with saying, give me hazardous pay because my job may have become more hazardous maybe because these are not circumstances that we're normally under an example of this would be when we transitioned from only fighting fire to running ems calls or only fire uh, firefighting to technical rescue hazardous material and i know even within that hazardous material in some departments do get hazard pay so uh it's more the terminology not the fact that i don't want us to move forward and make more i'd love to tag somebody in on this like i don't know maybe hatch i wanted to tag in but that's right i was monopolizing the time who wants to go with this one no i'm you not please? going anywhere near this one what I, hatch <laughs> i can do it yeah i'm tagging hatch in. I get the all right so it's semantics that you have an issue with this about you think they should get money but they shouldn't be calling it hazard pay that's what your issue is how about the military you okay with them going and getting hazard pay they sign up for a very dangerous stuff actually you get to shut your mouth you don't get to talk right now <laughs> <laughs> what do you, so what do you think you don't care what you think i can turn his mic off yeah exactly so that, that doesn't really make any sense. They, the hazard, they get a pay. So let me ask you this. Uh, this actually should have been added to the list of shit we weren't going to talk about. <laughs> because this actually puts me into where I have to kind of talk about some of the shit we said we weren't going to talk about. We were not fully prepared for what we were getting into. When you sign up, you're going to get all your PPE. You're going to have air bottles. You're going to be trained how to do this. 
This is learning on the fly that we have been going through for the past two months on everything we're doing. Nobody has concrete answers. That is the hazard. You did not sign up for being thrown into a situation that you were not prepared for. That's where the hazard pay comes in, in my opinion. So I totally disagree with that. I think the hazard is is the entire world is having to learn on the fly and figure this out as they're going along. And as you're having to be in the front lines and you can't be sheltered in place, that yeah, you deserve hazard pay for that. I think that is BS that, you know, it's a dangerous job and, you know, you should expect that to do that. Yeah, you are, but you're also expected to be able to give them all the resources, not say, hey, I need you to microwave this N95 mask because I think that works or wipe it down with Lysol because I think that works. They don't know. They don't have any idea if it works or not. Man, why am I being so loud? <laughs> <Don't worry laughs> you got me fired up on this damn thing. <laughs> Y'all got to get ready because uh, I'm about 20 seconds out. And I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this. But, again, I think that's bullshit. I think they should get hydrate pay. I, I'm totally for it. Totally think they should get it. Uh, it is a dangerous job. I get it. They signed up for it. But they also signed up to be completely prepared and being given all the resources. And there's no way we could be prepared for something we had no idea was coming. And is it just all hung up on what you call it? You can't talk about it. I can. We're in the 10-second break. Oh, I incited no. a riot on purpose, no. and, and, and it works. So, <laughs> <laughs> Who's taking it? Jane. Uh, I, I don't – I guess you can't chime back in, so I don't know why I'm going with this, but I don't have a problem with the pay. I see the pay different. I don't see it as hazardous pay where you guys are going with it. I, I, that's from my perspective. I don't see this being, we're giving this to you because this is uh, an extra hazard that we didn't see coming or whatever the case, regardless of what you call it, whether you call it hazard pay, administrative pay, extra duty pay. I don't know, I don't know what you call it. It doesn't matter to me on that. <clears throat> I see it as a way to offset a group of individuals who had no choice but to work. We had essential and non-essential personnel and essential personnel were made to work. Non-essential people were said, you can go home and stay out of this. And we're going to pay you the exact same amount of money as if you were here. Now, how is that in any way right to the individual who has no choice but to be here? I think you should give them extra pay because they're doing extra work. Their normal duties at that point are, had become extra work. The people that sat home that were in the what got classified as non-essential, they had a job they would they would be doing right. They got put home, they got sent home, and they are in a non-essential status. So now they are getting paid, and they are not doing any work. Now some are, but that's another classification. They're not getting done anything. Now we have a group that has to be here because they are essential. They are still doing work. And I think they should be paid extra for doing that work. Plain and simple. I, that's how I see it. Somebody tagging in on this? Bill, you want any of this? I do not want any of this. I would like to tag in next. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He gets the last word. How the fuck did that work out? No, it doesn't. No, it is. It's, it's, it's I may. Round. last round. I it's may. The last round. Or, oh, is it? Okay, well, I may or I may not. So here it goes. Uh, I disagree with you, Shane, because of the fact that essential versus non-essential. I don't give a rat's ass about that. You're a firefighter, which means you do not ever know what the emergency is. They dictate the emergency. Therefore, hazardous, the word, that is our existence. The fact that you could lose your, no structure fire is the same, medical calls ain't the same. It doesn't matter if it's tuberculo tuberculosis, hepatitis, HIV. We are always in a position of hazard. Extra work, good Lord, they add a, a, extra to our job load all the time. So I disagree with that. On the other hand, what I would like to say is, Hatch, what I love about you is your honesty. <laughs> the fact that you're always very straightforward about everything. Your hair is freaking spectacular. You wear T-shirts that keep us on our toes all the time what's he wearing next because they usually have some type of saying or something on them that he knows and we don't know so awesome and of course i love your family shane you know what i love about you damn near everything buddy your hair is not as spectacular as hatches but it's always How pretty it pretty well put together i absolutely love your family uh i think you and i are pretty close-minded with the exception of this that i totally disagree with you on <laughs> <laughs> i get the last word this is fantastic bill 
Say something about my hair. I absolutely love your complexity. <laughs> I thought he was going to say your complexion. <laughs> <laughs> your complexity. It's a little splotchy today. <laughs> if anybody's ever been privy to his tax pay, his tax. There's no such thing as a text. It's called a briefing, uh, 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 a letter, <laughs> a dissertation. There's no such thing <laughs> as a single paragraph. And I absolutely love that about you. And I love uh, your references with movies and, uh, and songs. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> the, I like it. Well, yeah. That was a way to, good way to finish that out. Though. <laughs> that was funny. That was just a little experiment. Uh, which back to you, Pabell. Which part were you disagreeing with? I agreed with you. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> if it goes out, I'm trying to figure out what you disagreed with. I, oh, I if agreed it goes with out. You. Uh, no, you were saying that no, I we agreed were with you. We shouldn't get extra money for hazards. That's not why we're getting extra money. We're getting extra mm -hmm. money because there's people sitting at home not doing work. Well, but that's, that right. are getting that's money. specific. To that happens your every day. Right, right. That's yeah. not happening everywhere. Okay, so uh, we're in agreement that. But what I would disagree with is shit. There's people sitting out every day while we're sitting busting our butts anyway. So I only did that to get that under my hatch skin. riled up. That's it. <laughs> but that was fun. It's like speed dating. Yeah, it was a little harder. All right, so who are you going to date? <laughs> I don't know. Who you you had all the back? compliments. I mean, that was pretty nice. I don't know what to do about all that. <laughs> yep, I'm definitely going to leave. Made me feel kind we of went, way. I know. We went all aggressive at one point, and then there he's like, like giving like, me compliments. Aw, I don't know what to do. I'm wagging like, like a little puppy. <laughs> it's the part of the boxing match when the other guy's just kind of hugging you. Yeah. You know? Won't, won't get away from you. He's just hugging you. And he bites your ear. <laughs> so, uh, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, got a little weird at the end. Papo had to make it weird for everybody. Uh, <laughs> yep. I like the end. Yeah, tell us what you what your thoughts are on uh, hazard pay, and what your thoughts are on managing your expectations, and what your thoughts are on p -p bell. I guess no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Keep those uh, thoughts to yourself. Uh, His closing uh, comments. Uh, we love Pabell. We do. Well, 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 and we're done. Bye. That was fun. Combustible is available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Amazon, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to Combustible to make sure you don't miss out on an episode. Follow us on Facebook so we know how many of you listeners there are out there. And you can check us out online at CombustibleThePodcast.com. As always, we would like to thank the Golden Dogs and True North Records for letting us use their song Saints at the Gates for our theme music. You can find the Golden Dogs music on any streaming platform. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you later.